Hello. Hopefully uh, this will work. My phone has a very weird connection, but we're outside. <laughs> I'll start typing real quick. Okay. Anyway, welcome back to the first time we've been out in the village since this year, 2021. Carl is on his way. He's having a, I hear him. Anyway, but we're using my phone internet, which has been quite dodgy lately. So we'll see if this works. If not, it may get cut short and I'm so sorry. It's Carl. I just started it, but I had to quickly readjust my phone inside so it would stay on. Yeah. <laughs> my phone literally canceled two minutes prior, but I got it working again and it's inside. The door. So there you go. More technical information than you needed. So who are you? I'm Carl. Yeah. What do you do? I occasionally guide people. <laughs> yeah, no, and I'm Karen, and uh, live down there in the valley, on one of the Viking houses. It looks a bit like that one there, but with a grass roof like that one, and down that road. We can't go that far because my phone won't tether that far. So too bad. And it's also full of wool, yarn, and textile equipment. Needs to be cleaned out for the summer. So, anyway, we'll say hi. We're, um, what, it's minus three. I think that's another reason why my phone didn't work. Yeah, out here. So my phone is, that. don't tell anyone, but it's right behind that door is where my phone is. <laughs> but if you come into the village, this is the first thing you see. And sometimes he's the first guy you see. Yeah. Yeah, but he looks a little bit more Viking then. <laughs> Uh, so it's minus three. We're in Gudvangen, Norway, which is about two to three hours north of Bergen. Yeah. Yeah. So Charlotte's here. Hello, Charlotte. She made it this time. Uh, cold where she is. And Adriana is here. And Raymond Roberts is here. Of course, up early in the morning. Again, this is like the fourth week in a row for him. I'm very impressed. That's, That's dedication. Australian. That's the Australian. It's fall or autumn where they are, and they're predicting a Freezing 36 degrees Celsius. Ooh. Yeah. That's <laughs> for the next weekend. Oh my God. Uh, Christina is here and she's in Canada and the snow is melting. Yep, it's melting here. As a matter of fact, most of that snow was gone. And then we got hit by a truckload. I don't know how much coming into Gudvangen, but in the east part of Norway, we got hit by a truckload and it dropped, I don't know, like this much snow. Yeah, in one night. So I went out and shoveled, and then I went back out again, and there was this much again. So I went out and shoveled, and then this much again. So I said, screw it, and went to bed at 2 a.m., woke up in the morning. <laughs> so I'm assuming that's probably what dumped up there. So maybe we get avalanches, but I think it's a little too cold for avalanches today. Uh, you occasionally get them when it's cold as well, mm. because uh, if you have liquid water in a crevice Let's and it see. freezes... That up uh, there, it expands, and that can cause a stone to start gliding, and yeah. that can start an avalanche. And then this here will pour down through here, and that goes kind of behind the house that I stay in. But fortunately, on the other side of the river, yeah. So we've got new snow, so it could be there wasn't as much up there before. There's also a potential potential avalanching right there too. God, it's hard to point like a weather girl. I'm not good at down that way anyway <laughs> um so let's see and albert is here karen hollick is here good morning from phoenix arizona where they had much needed rainstorm yesterday and dropped our temperature almost 40 degrees wow susan is youngman is here from the adirondacks and prude is here feels like minus 31 here all week yeah oh, oh he's getting ready he's had iced coffee Energy in a cup. Uh, crikey, it's that's a bit brisk. I love the Australian. <laughs> crikey. Uh, Karsten is here and Doro. Hello from Germany, they say. And hello, Nell from freezing cold Finland. Oh, my God. Uh, minus 30-something. Drea is here from my hometown of Duluth. Lindsay Langley is back. And Aunt Bonnie is back. Uh, welcome back. Hope everything's better. And Diane Helger is here. Who else do we have? 
Torun is back again from Austin, Texas. She hasn't been outside yet. I couldn't understand completely. <laughs> so she doesn't know what the weather is like yet. But it's really early over there. It should be 10, 10, 11 o'clock over there, if I remember correctly. They're a seven hour difference from us. California is nine. And New York is six. It looks like it's snowing up there, though. Could just be cloud. My kid is here, trash. <laughs> oh, Cecilia, you're not trash. Anyway, hello. Could be Alex, too. Heidi Lisa this year, hello. We're expecting your brother to return to us soon. <laughs> but it is Heidi Marie's birthday, the other Heidi, so we understand he's a little bit late. Is, uh, my kid wants to know if it's cold outside. If you take out one foot outside the door, you'll know, Cecilia. Anyway, um, oh, Drea's starting her first hat using 100% wool. You'll like wool. Wool is way better than acrylic. A lot of think uh, wool is too warm, but actually the other way around. Acrylic does not breathe, so if you wear an acrylic hat, you'll start sweating like mad, whereas wool, it'll keep you warm, but it'll breathe. So you won't get sweaty, but you might get a little itchy. How do you feel in wool? Does it? No, I'm so used to it. I remember it when I was a kid, it itched like crazy, but not anymore. I have one in here. Somebody's got their eye on this, so this is going to be sent. This one is from, I put it on Instagram. I don't think I've showed this one on you. No, I did show it on YouTube. But they are going off in the mail to Germany as soon as I remember to write her back. But it doesn't itch here. You get okay? It's going to look better on Germany than me, I think. Is that a woodpecker? Sounded like one. Ah. And that's going to be popular. Uh, nope, not with all this wood we have. <laughs> Regina Giovanni is here, seven degrees in Manchester. We've been watching Regina. We watched her Coptic socks. We watched the part about the dodeca, diodecahedron. Did I say that right? Uh, dodecahedron. Damn it, I never get that right. <laughs> I think it's dodecahedron. Yeah, but we forgot to watch the first part with the Coptic socks, so we watched that. And oh, my other kid is online too. Hello, Alex. Hello, mother. <laughs> These ones I finished this week. I went to Ann Decker's Zoom chat. I keep forgetting to check it because that's normally when I'm driving. But I made it last week because the roads were closed due to snow. That much snow. So I finished these um, because they called me and reminded me to log in. They had a question. I'm so glad they did because I wouldn't want to miss it. When working in Dalarna, she noticed that the end row was your binding looked like it was going inwards. And this is continued after three rows, after the first three rows. Uh, but it is because I stretch mine out after every row. Dalarna has a tendency to hug you. So I need to stretch it out to feel what the true size of it actually is. So that might be, that turns out that that was why uh, the end row looked smaller than just below. Actually, it is a little smaller right here though because I decreased here. I had too many stitches after the thumb hole. So it's probably not the best example. Anyway, those ones I'll put in the shop. My kid wants to know how I'm not bored. How am I not bored? Out here. This is how I'm not bored. It's so pretty. Is that the tallest point in Gudvangen? That peak? I don't know. I think so. I know that the uh, base jumpers like to jump from there. If I go a little slower, you can see more. Charlotte says, I miss Gudvangen. A coworker sent her a picture from the valley. Did you meet her and her man? I don't think so. I was gone during the weekdays because school is in session. But it would have been fun to see her. You know, we've been here on the weekends. Uh, and then we quarantine in Vespi while my kids go to school. And then we come back and we quarantine here. As you can see, my massive cohort. <laughs> That's my massive cohort. Uh, so he's also my cohort in Vespi. Uh, Katrina Focal is here. Nice colors. Are these plant dyed or chemical ones? These, unfortunately, are not plant dyed, but they resemble plant dyed colors. This is actually a dark. Oh, actually, this look. This is more maroon. 
but it looks right anyway. But these are all Blona from Hilla's Vogue. So it's their natural colors. They also have this one. Also, there is a little yeah. bit of a difference from what I see with my yeah. eyes and what I see on the screen. That's what I was thinking, because it's this is more maroon than this. The, it looks almost orangish on the screen, but it's actually... Yeah, they're much darker in real life than they are on the screen. Yeah, this one's closer, though, for some reason, but... So I pull it further back? No. But... Uh, don't break the keyboard. No. This is kind of like, um, uh, what would you call it? An older Christmas color. A rustic Christmas red. Not a cherry red like Santa red, but like a rustic red from Chris like Christmassy rustic. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> it's a girl thing. I can do tones. Anyway, but these are from Hildesburg. Uh But they do have a darker red than this as well, which is more closer to my dress, which is also looking very orange. Oh, crap. I don't know. I give up. My computer cable is white. There you can see the orangish tone because this is white, not not orange. So maybe like that. Vintage red. Thank you. Raymond knows. Points to Australia. <laughs> uh, Ram says it looks dark red on her phone, so it could just be my Mac. My Viking historically accurate Mac. Uh, let's see. Uh, I need a pair of socks, maybe two. Could I make them paying? Of course. Yes, I can, but you'll be in queue. So if you don't need them in a hurry, I can. And we can talk after because I have to make two for a lady in Oslo as well. And I need to finish. See, this is what Greg does to his socks. This is why I need to make Greg new socks. Greg's not here today because he's celebrating a birthday tomorrow. So if you have Greg on any social media, send him a happy birthday. Uh, but he says hello. So these are Greg's new socks. I obviously have not done anything since last week, so I have to get a move on. So when these are done and two others, then I can make you some socks. You might have to trace your foot and send it to me though, so we'll see. Normally I don't do commissions because we all know what happened with the blacksmith sweater, which is still not done. Fortunately that works out for the blacksmith that it's still not done either, but anyhow. Um, what does Greg do to those socks? I know, right? I only can think of is their Oslo. These are Oslo and it's Alafas Lopi um, Icelandic wool. So it's it it's a Lopi anyway, so it's not two ply, so it's just the one thread. But what does he do to these things? Do you think it's his shoes? His shoes are too tight. That's the only explanation I can come up with. That could be it. Thing is, these aren't destroyed. Believe it or not, uh, because it's an afterthought heel. If you look on this side, you can see the heel is picked up and bound around afterwards. So I can cut this off and put a new heel on. And I can cut this off and bind a, the rest of the toe back this way. Um, it doesn't matter if the toe or if the sock was started this way or this way. You can still pick up and bind that way and that way. But the other reason I have them is because right now I'm starting up further up his leg, but eventually I can take the old sock and match his, the new one to the one that's pretty well worn to his feet and know that they'll fit. So I think he'll be happy with the new ones. The new ones are in Mammon, which is much thicker and denser than Oslo. They're a little on the see-through side, so maybe. But I do suspect it's the seams of his shoes. If they're too tight and he's got the leather seam on the inside. No, uh, but he's notorious for this. They're not uh, broken on the part that is in contact with the ground. They're broken on the part that is in contact with the back, back part of his shoe. Yeah, almost so all of them will break uh, here first. His heel is moving uh, relative to the shoe. And yeah. I don't understand how he does that. but Because huh. uh, the rest of it felt. This is like felted now from his feet. Yes, I aired them out a lot before I even touched it, but they felt it, even on the inside, they felt it. But uh, I am also famous for uh, stone walking. I walk like oh, yeah. an extremely careful 80 year old man. Or just a creepy drogger. Yeah. No, he does. Yeah, you do. You're stone walking. You have to display it for us. With your, You have your ax, don't you? You have to see this. This is. Um... So when he's wearing his Viking shoes, he... what is your shoes? Head to be? Oh, 
wait, we gotta go down a little bit. There we go. Is he looking kind of creepy the way he walks? <laughs> Stone walking, we call that. That is probably because my first pair of Viking shoes were had piper tin soles. And yeah. this gravel is extremely hot. This is not limestone, this is an orthosite. Which is what's in those mountains up there. And it... Uh, it's very sharp. Yeah, these are uh, kind of rounded now, but they were fresh gravel when we got them, so they were sharp and very hard. So... I'm making plastic noises. I can fairly quickly kill a pair of walking shoes. Let's see. Yeah, otherwise I don't know any other way that he uh, breaks them, he just does. That also explains my walking guys. Yes. The height is always perfect for that. Huh. Um, the wonders of knot binding. Yes, this is why, because needle binding is knots. So if this were knit and crochet and you pulled on this string, the whole thing would just unravel, but it doesn't. It just tightens, and that doesn't matter which way you go. So I like it. It's durable. Uh, that's really cool that they can be recycled, I think so too. And you'll even pull. The only thing is, if you want to unravel it, you literally have to pick out every single stitch. So you can actually save the yarn from one project and use it in another, but you have to pull it out every time. And that does weaken the fiber. So I would do it. But uh, maybe when I've used up all the yarn I have at home first. <laughs> We're talking truckloads. Uh, yeah, or repaired. Uh, Lindsay writes, it's really cool that they could be recycled or repaired than having to make new ones and throw away the old one. No, I would I would bind the new ones over again. I would always repair them. I'd still make a new pair because it's nice to have, but I would continue to I don't see one. you getting finished with all the yarn you have at your place. No. Nope. I've got Maybe lots of were, yarn. Maybe uh, but in quarantine in your house for about six months, you could make some kind of difference to it. I got more needle binding done here during lockdown with Virginia. One year ago, almost ex exactly one year ago, we went into lockdown, by the way. But I was a little bit wrong on the YouTube time. It is week 52. So next week is the one year anniversary. Uh, anniversary, uh, anniversary. But today is the, the last Sunday for ever, in a year of the year. So that's quite cool. But we're going to celebrate anyway. Um, and the, we'll have cake. But um, finding cake in Corona times. Is the bakery in Flom even open? Because I'll be damned if I'm going to bake. <laughs> How would I know? I don't know. You've lived here longer. Yes, but I don't really go to Flom for fresh pastries. I don't drive, so that would be one hell of a walk through two tunnels. You look like a, a pastry connoisseur. We could ask the French girl. That wouldn't be very Norwegian. Though. No, but asking the French to cook for them would be very Norwegian. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, no, so we'll still try to do a cake for next week. But I have the next fix thing. I only brought one strange Norwegian food thing with me because it's not strange. And it is a bit celebratory. One for you. Who knows what these are? It's custard and chocolate on a bun. And the bun is made with cardamom, I think. <laughs> this is something you uh, introduced me to. Really? I was not aware of this thing existing before you started mm -hmm. handing them to me sometime this summer. It is. Does anyone want to, there's Norwegians in here. They know what this is. They sell them at the gas station, which is how come we have some. But they're very Norwegian. First, just a, a bulla, a bulla. Say that in your bun. Your dialect. Embolla. Embolla. And so it's a bun, yeah. But it's a like cardamom flavored bun. Um, and then you. <laughs> well, Carl, she's gonna fatten you up. Oh, you have no idea, Pruda. There, <laughs> he's looking a little less sickly lately. <laughs> On the other hand, I'm looking a little bigger these days too. So <laughs> I've been eating more now. Um, but Viking season will be here in full, and then I'll lose weight again. But you, that's right. No, I, you're like he's got like this much more weight on him than before. But last time his his stomach was concave, so now it's just flattening out. So. <laughs> no. Um, anyway, do you know what they are? Yeah, let's see. Uh, 
says, I know what they are. The local spar calls them sparbola. No, it's not spar. Spar is the name of a grocery store, though. It also means to save. It is, um, oh, I was going to post a screenshot, but it didn't work. Um, there's a new tea turtle, a uh, new tea turtle shirt that I think we all need. I think I need to see that one, too. We have to send it. Dirmabolid. How do you say that in your dialect? Dirmabola. Dirmabola. That means dream bowl. Uh, dream bun. <laughs> I like dream bowl. <laughs> It's a dream bun, but uh, it's custard and chocolate on this one. Otherwise, it's just the same as the one with the chocolate chips, but this one is chocolate and custard. Yum. Or van vanilla cream. So, like if one slow step down and you're on the road, you are dreaming of balls and I'm dreaming of buns. Mm -hmm. I have more. <laughs> a four pack. <laughs> um, let's see. You go pick a side. I always tell people I send all the binding gifts to that. If something happens to the piece, just send it back and I will fix. Good girl. Even if it shrinks. Uh, my kid, for example, when they wear their socks, they like to walk through every mud puddle they can find. And then, of course, and then they're probably on and watching now. <laughs> and Aruna says they're way too cheap. What? You gotta make us a cake. We couldn't find any. Uh, anyway, but my kids walking around on these socks, and as they're wet, etc., then they pull them off instead of pushing them off. So the feet get longer, and then they start to felt that way and stay that way. So suddenly, their toes are like this much too long, and the sock is shorter, and the heel is not here anymore. It's now here. But you can cut that bit off, and you'll and either bind a new foot back on, or you can have it as a leg warmer. And we use them as fake socks. Mm. So. If uh, they destroy this part because it gets too felted and they can't wear it because it's too small, they cut it off like here, and then they just stick them inside their shoe on top of other socks. So it looks like Viking socks that they're wearing when they're actually just half. Pretty cool. I actually had that on Instagram at one point. I'll have to repost that, so I have to see if it's posted or just a story. By the way, Runa Lisa is here. Say happy birthday to Heidi Runa. We miss you, and we hope you come back here soon. We've got plans, don't we? Aruna, you're supposed to say that with an evil face. We have plans. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Dreaming of buns all day, says Charlotte. <laughs> mm. Let's see. Okay. Oh, and no, I'll ask no pictures, but here's the link Lindsay said. So, okay. Uh, by the way, while we're outside, you'll notice it is getting darker. We're not gonna make it until seven o'clock we'll have to go in um maybe we can actually it's about we're almost a we're 22 minutes in and it's not too too dark yet but we have something in that house that carl can show you you want to talk about weapons i can i'll get you some more but yeah um Which ones do you want? want me to talk about all the weapons or do you have any in particular you want me to talk about you can talk about weapons for 20 minutes and then we'll do questions <laughs> on the way, so. Mm. Pick your weapon you like, I'll answer a question. Mm. You go fix it, yes, for sure. I can always cut off whatever and it's really, it's really bad and proceed, but no reason to make something brand new if I can just cut and rebind. And by the way, those buns look amazing. She needs to make some. <laughs> we have amazing buns here. <laughs> No, oh, no, actually, I think repaired socks look much better uh, the more homey they are. Somebody posted on needle binding that um, we're in a darn, um, these two nice socks walk in and then find a bunch of socks that have been mended. And they said, we're in that darned place again. Get it darned. Uh, it was cute. Anyway, but I think homey socks look better. So show me what you have. Yeah. Bring on your weapons questions. Test them. Uh. When we talked about weapons the last time, uh, I said that uh, the sword, uh, sword was probably objectively the best weapon. And if I compare the sword to the axe, uh, with this one, I can cut with the entire surface. And with this one, I really have to aim for what I'm about to hit. This one has good balance, and this one is hopelessly balanced. 
I can show you this. The point of balance on the axis here. So quite far away from my hand back here when I'm wielding it. And this makes it kind of drag on the arm. So whenever I start an attack with the axe, the axe really wants to continue with that motion. So for me to stop it or change direction, I have to use a whole lot of force back here. But with the sword, the point of balance is a lot closer to my hand. So it's much more responsive and much faster to eat. Um, so uh, I would, and you can stab with it much more effectively than you can stab with the axe. But there are some advantages to the axe as well. Most notably that you can use it as a hook. You can pull down shields, you can pull out legs, you can go over the shoulder and pull people down and that sort of thing. Obviously, in reenactment combat, that becomes a little bit too dangerous. So we don't really do it except as uh, demonstrations of what probably were historical techniques. Uh, the axe also have one other uh, advantage, and that kind of goes hand in hand with its disadvantage of being uh, extremely forward heavy. When you land a blow with an axe, you have a lot of kinetic energy. So you can break bones through a chain mail and that sort of, sort of thing. And these two would probably be the most common hand weapons, uh, at least in Norway. In the rest of uh, Scandinavia, this thing is more common. This is the Skarma Sax or Seax or Sax. Popular all over Northern Europe in the Viking Age. This is the Saxon-English vari variation with a sharp long edge and then blunt on the curved side. In Scandinavia, they were usually the other way around. And in Estonia and Latvia, they just sharpened all three sides and called it a tree blade. Uh, these are very common in Swedish and Danish Viking graves but not so common in Norway. And the reason for that probably has to do with geography. Because back in the Viking Age, most of Sweden and Denmark is covered by forest. So you basically need a machete to get to work in the morning. But in Norway, it isn't forests that stop you. It's things like that. Hmm. So uh, whether you have a sax or not doesn't really matter to you. And if you have this much metal, you'd rather make one of these, because at least then you can match the distance of a sword wielder, which you can't with this. Yeah. You have some questions. Yes. Um... Uh, so one wants that sword so much uh, that the exact one, but they don't make them anymore. Where did you get that sword, or where did we get that sword? Is that yours, or is that this one? Yeah, is that yours, isn't it? This is mine. I... Where'd you get it? I bought it at the Viking Market here from. I think he is the guy who makes. I'm not entirely sure. A Polish blacksmith. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can see it has a little mark, kind of like a harp or a E right under my finger here. Uh, they are pretty common. Uh, this is not a unique sword. Uh, so I don't know if he makes them anymore. I think he does. Hmm. Do you remember his name or no? Uh, Leszek used to sell them for him. But uh, I don't think Leszek is a blacksmith. I think the... Leszek is the one I know. Is... Oh, no, no, no. He does not. I will... Jeez, how do you spell his name? Just a minute. I will look it up. Um, Leszek. Let's see. Do, 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 do. By the way, it's uh, Albert and Adrian. Um, L -E. That's... This guy. Um, 
Let it load. It might be. No, not that guy. Not that guy. Okay, it's not the Lesik guy. No, never mind. Um, but Lesik. Uh, I almost called him Kalinka, but that's not right. Um, okay. The one I'm thinking sells those little metals that you put on your, so the decoration that you put on your uh, bags and things, your leather bags. Uh, so Albert also wants to know, um, simple wax or dry them after being wet. Oh, wait, it's uh, a little bit more. Eh, no, no. I want that sword, the exa and, um, that exact one, but they don't make them much anymore. Uh, he wants to know. Um, and then uh, Snicklessy, if I said that right, uh, wants to know what to use uh, for blade wax or oil to protect your weapons from the elements. And uh, Albert writes, uh, simple wax or dry them after being wet, and you say... I mostly oh, I write use that Vaseline, name. because you can get it at the gas station and it works. Lesikania. But I don't even know if he does Viking anymore. I've not seen him there for a long time. Well, they have his name on there, so somebody can look for him. Uh, but well, yeah, what do you do for your weapons to treat them? Um, as I said, Vaseline. Oh, Vaseline. Uh, we also use, um, it's kind of a childish trick, but... Uh, Mm -hmm. We have uh, black colored pumice uh, stones because uh, no matter how good you are at taking care of them, they will rust a little bit. Yeah, you can that see traces off. of rust here now. But with this uh, black uh, pumice stones, mm -hmm. it looks like you're sharpening it with wet stone. And what you're really doing is removing rust. Mm -hmm. So they're popular among Viking reenactors. Re Berenice is here as well. Welcome back. Uh, love how sword guys, as I call them, always want to know which weapon we want uh, talked about. Ross is the same. I like that. Uh, lady weapons. Oh, yeah. No, maybe Mr. Weapon Guy. Oh, we're getting grainy already, so we might have to go in soon. Um, let's see. What else did you have here? Yeah. Random rights. Uh, my fella and his wife uh, do a thing at Disco World. Uh, Disco World events called How to Buckle Your Swash. Very odd seeing people do Viking style fighting in fencing whites. Mm -hmm. You know what that is? That sounds like a pirate thing. Uh, swash buckling is, it has something to do with the buckler. Uh, when you hang, uh, when you fought with sword and buckler, uh, this is the oldest way of fighting we actual have, uh, actually have manuscripts and uh, uh, treatises on uh, a buckler is a shield about this size yeah and you have your sword in your scabbard and then you put the buckler on top of the sword so that the buckler kind of hangs uh, in front of the sword when you're carrying them and when you draw it it makes this showing sound that you hear in every other connection but it shouldn't be you like that um, noise no i passionately hate that noise <laughs> Uh, let's see. Bring it back good memories. Uh, accented blokes talking weapons. There's an accented bloke talking about weapons. You want to show another one before it gets too dark? Uh, Carl was given the sword by a lady in the lake. <laughs> or in the mountains. <laughs> the fjord's too cold. The water's that way. <laughs> uh, Adrian says, uh, I know, Albert says, I know a man who makes them. I have a sword from them. Okay, maybe that was... And Adrian recently got his North Mythology exam back. He got an A, want a job? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. Torrance Scratch says, yes, happy one year. Oh, yeah, and Alders, uh, yeah. By the way, happy anniversary to the series. I know, this was so funny. We just started doing this while Virginia and I, but cat's out of the bag. She's relocated to Hallmar now because it's a little bit more work opportunity in Corona times out there. Anyway, but yeah, so it started with her and then came in Mona and then came in Mia and Runa and Greg and Anders, of course, was in for a little bit. We got you in the end. I never thought that would happen. That was good. <laughs> and then we had, God, who else do we have here? I actually wrote a little list. We had Torel for like three months. Oh throwing needle binding across the room because she does not uh, do well with fiber crafts. Kristen was also here for a little bit. Uh, Aurel Borsheim was here talking about best. He's the one with the giraffe, if anybody remembers. I want to do a, a best of video at some point, but I have to update my um, YouTube subscription so I can actually download them. Frederick Torsteinson was here and Aruna Irvrum as well. And Georg even made a visit. There's some more, I'm sure, but I'm not thinking of them all right now. But 
52 weeks though. Holy crap. I didn't know we were going to do this that long. Mm. We thought we would just do it while we were in quarantine. And then the Alex and Cecilia. Has been Alex kind and of, Cecilia. Uh, reoccurring characters. Yes, they have been. They're the one. We watched it. Uh, we rewatched episode or week three. Was it? I don't know. Anyway, it was either week. No, it was, I think it was week three anyway. And my kid gets locked outside because <laughs> she's trying to be a smart ass uh, by popping into the video. And then she runs around and, uh, goes to the window on this side and looks at me. And then I thought it was going to be the uh, one to tell her that she doesn't have a code to get back in the building again. Uh, anyway, that was kind of fun. So we're starting to watch them back anyway. I think we're up to week seven. There's a lot of things I kind of want to cut out and do. If you want to show us a spear before we go in and a shield. And then we'll go in. We can just inside that door is the just inside this door is our shop. So we can stand in there for a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it's quite fun. So we'll try to do some cake next week because then it's officially one year. I didn't think about that. I kept thinking this is the one year, but it's actually the last week of the year. We'll celebrate for two weeks. It'll be good. <laughs> uh, Anthea Potter says, I used brick dust for getting the rust off weapons sometimes. I have also some sand used sandstone dust. Does that sound familiar? What? Uh, brick dust or sandstone dust to... Um, Remove rust what from weapons. Anthea Potter writes, I used um, brick dust for getting the rust off weapons sometimes. I've also used sand dust or sandstone dust. Does that oh, sound? That works. Yeah. Uh, so show us what you got. Well, this, in addition to some kind of uh, belt weapon, can see that. would be the minimum requirement there. for a free man in the western yeah. part of Norway, according to the Gulating law. Uh, this type of spear, uh, many people call it a boar spear, but that's not really correct. On a boar spear, the wings would be uh, this way. They would point out this way. This is called a winged spear, and the point of the wings is to come a uh, bit closer to you if you can see the wings on there. Yeah, is to do uh, disarms, for instance. If I get my spear over my opponent's shield like this, I can pull it down and then. You want me to hold it for you and you can kill me? <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to teach me one day. Yep. I am kind of teaching you. You gave me the heaviest handled shield we own, by the way. This thing you is. You told me to get the shield from that house. That's the shield that was in that house. There were three of them in there. Four. Sign the blind guy, by all means. <laughs> oh, that's true. He has no night vision. Okay, what else am I doing? Am I still holding this and getting killed? Another thing with the spear is mm -hmm. that it is so fast that it is very hard to block. So if I faint against her face now... How's your depth perception? Well, a normal people, a person would probably lift that shield. <laughs> then she's up and down her. No. Uh, and I can do that. I don't like you anymore. <laughs> this <bit. clears throat> uh, spares in the Viking Edge could be thrown, but you have another type of spare that is more suited for that. This one, you can throw it, but it's like a last resort type of thing. You might have to talk louder when you're further away, by the way. But yeah. And when you throw it, you hold it a little bit over the point of balance, so about here. You aim with your shoulder, and you step into the throw. <laughs> I'm absolutely not going to do that down here. No, thank you. Did they throw axes, by the way? Someone was asking. Uh, unlikely. Mm. You have the mysterious weapon called the Otgar that we don't know what is. I think the odd guy is something like this, maybe with a slightly bigger head. Mm. Uh, we know that it makes a whistling sound in the air. You can decapitate people with it. You can use it from horseback. And if you're going for a long swim, you cut off the shaft and only bring the blade with you. So uh, in some translation, it's called uh, mm -hmm. Viking Hailbred or a hogsputer, cutting spare. Yeah. And uh, 
I think if you make the sides of this uh, head sharp enough, you should probably be able to cut with it. So I think it's that simple. They are just changing the name of a known item based mm. on the usage. So if you're using a sword to cut with, a uh, spare to cut with, yeah. instead of stabbing, it's an old guy. Oh. I think. But this is uh, very much a subject for debate among people who know a hell of a lot more about the Viking Age than I do. I asked you about the wing on that before, though. The the wings on the, when you have the wings on your spear there. Did We have one that has them and one that does not. Which one is more Viking? Uh, both of them are Viking. Oh. Because... Um, you have finds of winged spares from the Viking Age, but you also have a lot more finds of uh, spares without wings. Ah. So then, but the wing has uh, definitely useful. Um, oh, Maria Hale's here as well. Hello, she finally made it. Ah, she she ditched us for Mary Poisson a couple of weeks ago, but you know what? I checked Mary out. It's worth it. Uh, no, it just happened around at the same time. But by the way, if you get a chance to watch that back, I think it was on historic textile clothing or something, but that is really good. She talks for like two hours about Finnish uh, clothing in the Viking Age. Mm. It is really good. Uh, let's see, random FP, yes, they do sword and buckler as well. Oh, yeah, we read that uh, as well and some fencing, but also Urian brings his reenactment stuff. Uh, what is more historically accurate to have needles made out of, by the way? Oh. I would say wood, but it's a matter of how much of it stays intact in the ground. Keep in mind, I use really long needles, but they have found them this long. Whether they were used for needle binding or weaving or net making could be anything. But they did have them out of bone and antler and horn as well, you yeah. even metal. And the metal ones would have a much better odds of surviving until present day. Yeah. So they will probably be somewhat overrepresented. Yeah. I would think so. Bone needles, there's a lot of those found. Do you manage to always attempt to stab me in the face when you are doing needle binding? Well, if you didn't attack me with a spear, I wouldn't feel the need. <laughs> okay, no, I'll be honest. This one, by the way, Runa made me. Uh -huh. But I asked them to be extra long, and this is why I talk about this a bit. But when I'm making my stitch, if it was a short needle, I don't have much to grab onto. But when it's a long needle, I can push it through and grab it in the same go. And I have uh, bad wrists. I have carpal tunnel syndrome, so I prefer to have more to grab onto because it does. I don't feel like I'm gripping it when it's small. Anyway, but uh, Saruna, who's in here, made it. Uh, we also do have some bonus stuff. I, let's see. Looks a little bit like a radioactive sign. <laughs> I like that. Um, does the shop sell wool from our sheep? Not yet, uh, because it's a lot of work to process it. Uh, but Hillesvog, this yarn that we've had here, which I can't show you. I think we need to go in, by the way, if you want to open up and we'll walk in. Um, it is made with the same, with the wool from sheep like ours. Uh, they're made from the same race. Let's see. We'll go walk in the shop and you can see it in a minute. As soon as he unlocks it in there. Wooden sandstone, dust be sand. I kind of like that. I don't know, actually. I think, so. I think it's a sand. Um, the sheep that we have are Norwegian spell sow or old Norwegian short tail land race. And they are native to this part of the, we can just leave them out and get them after. Native to this part of Norway and have been around as long as the Vikings. Let's see. Oh, Aunt Bonnie's going to bed. Tell the girls hi and have a good week. Daylight savings time starts tonight. That's right. That's just something to keep in mind because the next two weeks, there's going to be an hour difference. You can just uh, Google what time is it in Norway now because our clocks don't change until the 28th. So we will go next Saturday and the Saturday after that, but it'll still be 6 o'clock our time. But for you guys, it would be uh, one hour less time difference for those two weeks alone. Historic tech dial oh, yeah. Real Land Hale writes, Karen, Historic Textiles have another webinar today from Italy. It will begin at 1900 my time, which is my time as well. So right after this, I might have to check that out. Uh, I will be a bit late, though. So let's go in. We can go in the shop. Looks like that. We might as well put the yarn in the back. This is the Viking shop part of it anyway. That is really hard to see. 
but actually it's probably easier to bring it up but I can pan. You know, when I hit a thousand subscribers so I can send from a phone with a gimbal and better quality than my computer. Anyway, just so you know, hit the subscribe if you haven't. Tell your friends to. Uh, because we have a phone that can take much better quality. But I'll show those here. Um, this one. I think it's these I made my hat out of. Of course, it's... Um, there, you can see it better. But these are... Let's see, Blona from Hillesborg, uh, which is too, not too far from here, but it's also made with, it's Pelsul garn, uh, but it's the same, same type of sheep that we have. So if it's the closest we can get right now, I have one thing I can show you. These back before somebody notices I'm made a mess. Oh, they relocated them, there they are. These, they have the worst lighting ever. There, these ones I did make. These are from our sheep. Thing is, it takes a long time to um, wash the wool, card the wool, <laughs> and spin the wool. And there's some more steps in between then anyway. So to make an entire hat would be super expensive. So I've made these. Uh, instead, which are small, but they're still pricey because of all the work that goes into it. But these are hand spun from the our sheep. You can. This is Spartan, and this is Grotas. They look a little lighter. It's weird. This one, uh, Grotas, which was a white sheep, he's now looking more gray. That tends to stay true to him, but Spartan tends to look lighter. This is completely Spartan, and that's completely Grotas. But. Uh, one day we hope to have it spun in here, but right now it's a, it's a lot of work to do. And we're on off time. Let's see. It looks like my link is still working, so that's good. I'm not too far from my phone. Um, catching up on chat. You want to say hi here, Carl? You can come in the shot. Someday, some wonderful day, I will visit and buy all the things. Oh, start with mine. No, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, they are beautiful colors that they have over there. Lots and lots of wonderful colors. We even have plant dye that Kristen made here as well. Uh, that way. And down there as well. Those are plant dyed uh, that Kristen did earlier in the spring last year. Heidi, oh, so mung, yafi in the Fargo Pagarn. And if only you had a brother who worked here. <laughs> I think Runa's going to kill me. Uh, yeah, so Runa can get you that yarn. Let's see, do you have any more weapons questions or anything like that we can ask? You didn't get to talk much about the shield. You wanna do that a little bit? Cause we still got a little bit of time left. The shield be there. It's made out of plywood with a very bad grip. Yeah. Um, historically, they were made out of uh, oak or, uh, oh, what's the name of the other one? Maple? No, it wouldn't be ma birch. No, not birch. Uh, I don't know how much maple in Norway. Oh, softer, but more flexible. Um, Somebody help me out. Softer, but more flexible than oak. Uh, uh, <laughs> That's the, not an innuendo. <laughs> uh, the shields in, I think it's the Gokstar find. Uh, they're made out of one layer of, I think, oaken planks, and about an inch thick uh, in the middle where the boss goes, the metal bit. If and then they are only a few millimeters yeah. thick uh, out at the edge. Then you're not so white. Uh, but according to the Gulating law that uh, <laughs> was for the western part of Norway, the shield had to be made of two, two layers of wood glued together like this, so that it can't be split with the wood without going completely perpendicular to the other set of wood. It had to have three metal bars one to hold on to and two to just support it. And you were allowed to paint it, but only in yellow and black. Uh, the 
thing that is a little bit annoying is that as far as I know, none of the fines have been made the way that the law says you have to make them. This might have to do with the fines being from other parts of Norway. The Gulating law, uh, the Gulating area was uh, only the western and parts of the southern part of Norway. And I don't know of any shield fines from that area. An enormous amount of shield bosses, but I don't know of any shield wood. Hmm. Well, I was just reading, I saw a question I missed earlier, but I'll get to it in a minute. Um, but the, there was a debate actually as to whether shields have two layers or one layer, but you say they all have two. No, I said that the law says that I should have The two. law says they should, but it makes sense with but splitting. I haven't found any that uh, were made that way as far as I know. Yeah. Did they use fur to in the inside of their buckler or of the crap? Was it the boss? The boss of the shield, the metal part. Did they use? We used to have those here. No. Did they have fur on the inside or anything to protect their hands? I wouldn't think not. I've seen then, them like that, but I didn't know if that was just a modern adaption. I would guess it's a modern adaption. Uh, mm. You, the, the metal is there to protect your hand, uh, but the thing with the shield is. Um, you can carry something heavy like a chain man because it's on the center of your body. But as soon as something is heavy and it's out here, you really feel the weight of it. So any extra weight on the shield that isn't strictly speaking necessary mm. would probably be avoided. Hmm. Well, I was just curious about that. Let's see if I go down and see if there's more. Basswood, could that be it? Mm, I, I have just a slip of- Spruce. No. No. Uh, we've got some more options in here. Let's see. Uh, the English used Texas Bacata, if that's you right, in English, I in German to make their longbows. Yeah, you were, uh, uh, it's called Barlind in Norwegian. It's, uh, is that what Barlind is? I didn't realize that. Yeah. That uh, needle's made of that. It's, uh, I don't lick those needles, by the way. No, they're very poisonous. Don't yeah. let your dogs chew them either. Um, that was very popular for bows, hmm. uh, but uh, that is because of uh, very hard inner wood and very stretchy outer wood. Uh, I don't know if that would make them ideal for anything else. Hmm. Uh, Georg has a bucket made out of uh, yew wood, oh. which strikes me as a very odd use of yew wood, but. Uh, yeah, that would hmm, that would sound. Um, well, I don't think I'd use it for consumption. <laughs> no, <me laughs> I wouldn't neither, drink that but water. We might be overly careful compared to people in the Viking age. Yeah, but I suppose. It's particularly the dust from it. When you are making a bow, you have to uh, file it. Yeah. And that dust, you absolutely do not want to breathe in. Oh, cover your nose anytime. Uh, UES in Stavanger has one shield boss in the museum, Archaeologisk Museum, says uh, Albert. Do you know that one? Um, shield boss, no, yes, but they're not exactly uncommon. Oh, okay, but they, they uh, did find quite a bit of them, but some of them are... Uh, the thing you don't find usually is the organic bits. Ah. Uh, the wood and uh, possibly rawhide and uh, fish glue and whatever else goes into making a shield. Fine, uh, sorry. <laughs> in uh, uh, at the Miklebust uh, burial at North mm -hmm. there is this uh, pot. It's about two hours uh, from here. That uh, it's a pot with a Buddha-like. Uh, yeah. Uh, Turn it on. Yeah. It's a figure of something that like somebody who's sitting in the lotus position and kind of holding like this, and the handle for uh, this pot goes through his arm. So it's just a little figurine at the side of the bucket. Hmm. But this bucket was full of shield bosses. Hmm. I don't remember exactly how many were in it, but it was loads. Ah. But this was a burned ship burial. So uh, almost all of the organic things in this burial were destroyed even before they closed it. Of course. So the reason that's uh, the ship up at Sagastad in North Ride is a mm -hmm. reproduction of that ship. And the way you can make a reprodu reproduction of a burnt Viking ship is because uh, all the nails fall right down when it burns. Hmm. So you can make an assumption based on how long it is and how many nails and where the nails are to the size of the ship. Hmm. And that's a big one. 
by the way, that ship uh, Norfjord, I was Miklabust, wasn't it? Saga Miklabust. Yep. It was a reproduction, and it's in um, its own little museum. If I, in Norfjord died. Yeah. And Adrian and Albert, I believe, were there. Pine, by the way. Fudu. Nope. Okay. Basswood is apparently American. Uh, Lirda made it, by the way. Uh, you're not late yet. <laughs> but do remember that there's daylight savings in the United States this week, but it is not, or tomorrow, today, but it is not daylight savings in Norway for two more weeks yet. So there's a difference in time. But I think that YouTube keeps up on that. Uh, by the way, we had a couple of Corona questions, and it has been a while since we started out with um, oh, sort of a, planning a 2022 Sons of Norway convention in August. I want to go to that one day. Anyway, Sons of Norway is out of Duluth as well. Uh, but anyway, we haven't had – the Corona has changed a bit this week in, in Norway. Yeah. Uh, and not for the better. Uh, no, this is a very new update within the last – well, yesterday we probably had the second highest number of new cases uh, since the beginning. It went down, way down for a while. Uh, yeah, but, uh, since, but now they're... Since New Year, it has been first going steadily up and then it is starting to go up quickly the last couple of weeks. Mm. But the vaccination rate isn't as fast as we'd like? No. No. Uh... I'm not sure what the reasons for that are, unless it's just distribution or something. Um, but let's see if we, there was two questions anyway, regarding this, this is why I bring this up. Um, one of them was up here, Kathleen Egan, I think. A little further than that. Let's see. Uh, it was something about if she gets vaccinated, can she come to Norway? I think if I remember that correctly. Um, right now, yeah. If anybody comes into Norway right now, as of this weekend, right now they have to go into quarantine, but they're allowed to quarantine at home if they're from, yeah. if they were someone from here that went out for some reason and came back in again. But uh, you read something. From Wednesday on the onwards, uh, I will have to quarantine in a quarantine hotel. Too many people have been playing fast and loose with the home quarantine rules. At so. their cost too. Uh, Norway will not pick up the bill for that hotel either. Yeah. So that's uh, that's something to keep in mind, right? And just in time for Easter. Easter rules, they'll say yeah, that we can go to... Uh, because of Easter. It's because of Easter, yeah. Because they ex expect a lot of uh, foreigners with uh, Norwegian families and Norwegians living abroad to come back to Norway for Easter. Um, and Norway just had uh, two weeks, one week for one part of Norway and one week for the next part of Norway. Um, winter vacation, uh, which yeah. is why I had my kids here the last couple times. And they think maybe that's part of the reason of the spike is the aftermath of that no? maybe but the primary mutation reason well. is the mutation yeah um i heard one of the experts say that the winter vacation was probably good because then people uh, basically had to hold the keep to their own little bubble and they weren't interacting so much with friends and neighbors yeah, because this year, oh, so last year they weren't letting you go to your cabin for Easter, which was a huge thing for Norway because they love to go to their cabins. This year, Easter's in, what, two weeks? Uh, yeah. You're allowed to go to your cabin, but you can't have any friends over, I think, or? No. No doubt. Kind of overdoing it, but uh, when you see the statistics, you understand why. Yeah, no, they're, they're spiking. Um Let's see. So I found what she wrote. She said, who is vaccinated now and can go to Norway this summer? Or can a vaccinated American go to Norway this summer? Do we I know would anything say about most that? Most likely. There hasn't been made any rules about this yet, as far as I know. Mm. But that sounds reasonable. Uh, if somebody... Uh, if there is a simple way to document that somebody is vaccinated, then they are not spreading the virus. And mm. I don't see any reason why you should uh, refuse them entry. No. We don't have any plans for that yet, as for the store, but we are the village, but we're still closed for Corona. Uh, because no museum or this type place are allowed to be open right now in Norway. No, uh, we'll see. Um, mm. I'm expecting some degree of normalcy this summer, but... Um, Whether the borders are open is another thing. Uh, yes. Mm. But uh, if the border is open, if only uh, to vaccinated people, mm. then well, fine. 
Nice thing about open air is it's pretty easy to stay distant anyway uh, here. We do. Yeah. And we were open all summer and we didn't have a case in this county, uh, mm -hmm. this uh, Ireland, this. Uh, it's a county. Uh, this county yeah. mm -hmm. has had zero cases. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it theoretically has had something like three cases. But three, all theoretically of, three, but none of those actually live here. No, none of them were actually here when they were infected. Uh, one guy who has address here lives in Bergen and was infected in Bergen and quarantined there. Mm. Uh, somebody went to visit a uh, boyfriend or girlfriend in an infected area and was quarantined there. And the tunnel, tunnel worker on his way here was uh, quarantined before he got there. Mm. So the virus has not been to this continent. No, not really. Not mm -mm. on wood and don't lick the tourists. <laughs> oh, it's knocking on wood. And yes, no, don't lick the tourists. It's not good, no matter how much they ask you. Uh, <laughs> Turin uh, says, I'm vaccinated, but don't have the funds available to go to vacation this summer. Uh, available vacation time to go this summer. No, most of us are staying pretty local. But if you can, good morning. There's a lot of campsites nearby and hotels. So it's pretty easy to stay distant here. But we would love, 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 love to see you guys. We will. We do plan on opening this summer. We just don't know when when in the spring even, uh, yeah. yet. It's all depending on the numbers and the statistics and uh, what the government allows and doesn't allow. Um, yeah, there's uh, uh, Adrian writing. Uh, yes, he and Albert were there. They were part of the second crew. And there's Albert writing, I have rode that ship and slept on the same, slept on it same as Adrian. Yeah, that was really quite cool to see. There's a lot of your Facebook on that. There's a documentary about it on NRK uh, from start to finish of the project. That is the saga Meek Lebus, isn't it? Making not skip ship uh, and Noor, is it Nordfjord or Nordfjord? Uh, Nord. Nordfjord. I'd uh, see if you can find it. Uh, so no, it was really quite cool. Uh, there was a whole pack of those uh, students that went together, and those two were part of them. Delays. On, uh, Raymond writes delays on vaccines here in Australia. They are planning four million vaccinated by the end of March, but so far they've uh, only done a hundred thousand. Oh, what percent is Norway vaccinated by now? In bottom. I'm at the bottom of the list because I'm 48, so I'm in the and I'm not a high risk. But uh, I am registered to be vaccinated, so as soon as it's possible, game on. Um, we are hitting one hour. Is there anything else we need to say before we wrap up? How is Norway supporting those whose incomes depend on things being open, like us? Well, <laughs> in theory, very good. In practice, very bad. Mm. I, uh, yeah, it's a, like I have a government stipend, but it's the same as I was, yeah, in a different uh, situation before then. So it happens for, yeah, NAV, NAV is like the government welfare system uh, that takes care of that. Let's see, Norfjord died, he wrote, uh, they wrote more correctly. Um, got a dose of it, but all stooped, all stopped. Ah. Um, Dre writes, educator waiting on a list, not eligible yet. I haven't uh, seen, I just was gonna say, I hope vaccinated people can travel soon. I got Sputnik, got the Sputnik and I'm so grateful, Rice Pruda. Hmm. Oh, so we are on the list to be vaccinated as soon as possible, but we are both in the last bracket of people to be uh, vaccinated. Uh, there's other groups that come in more. Anyway, we hit one hour. So that wraps up one year of uh, needle binding and Viking which has now hmm. gone into Viking and needle binding because why not merge the two? And I still can't needle bind. I still can't sword fight. Okay, we'll have to fix that. You guys have to come and play. Uh, okay, so next week we'll see if we can find a cake. Um, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, Runa, who lives in a bigger city, when he's if he's back, can you get a hold of a cake <laughs> for us? Something very Norwegian, probably full of strawberries, which I don't like, but. Can't we just throw ingredients at Greg and see if eggs come out? Greg will be here next week again. Yes. Oh, and, 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 if you didn't catch it, it is Greg's birthday tomorrow. So send him a message if you have the opportunity. That's why he's not here today. He's getting ready for birthday celebrations. And yes, we will. Let's make Greg do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next week. Same time. Remember to check um, what time it is in Norway because of daylight savings. We are not changing our clocks for two weeks yet here.
Bye. Bye.